Join in with the wacky hijinks when Steve Trevor pairs with Diana and Damien Wayne to free the captives of Amanda Waller's Gamora Island prison. Can Damien keep Diana and Steve from smooching long enough to complete a prison break? Let's find out in Wonder Woman number 13 from DC Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Wonder Woman number 13. Writer Tom King completes Wonder Woman's meager contribution to the absolute power event with an issue chock full of prison break hijinks, odd dialogue, silly plot developments, and a lot of smooching. There is one big development that comes out of this issue, so there's something there at least. On a side note, make sure you read Superman number 18 before reading Wonder Woman number 13. The outcome of Superman's journey with Zatanna directly ties into the outcome of this comic. Before we dig in, let's recap what happened last time in Wonder Woman number 12. Diana teamed up with Damien Wayne to play good cop, bad cop with a captured Captain Boomerang to figure out who had the better method of extracting information. Diana's words of reason or Damien's penchant for dangling their captive from a rope. In the end, Boomerang gave up Amanda Waller's secret location of Gamora Island, which is where the prison is located, although I'm not really sure that was much of a secret to begin with, but okay, fine, whatever. And that brings us to the current issue, which is Wonder Woman number 13, which is a tie-in to Absolute Power. Steve Trevor, after running smack dab into Diana and Damian Wayne at the end of Absolute Power Task Force 7 number 6, engages in serious lip-locking and possibly heavy petting with Diana, much to Damian's dismay. Impromptu makeout sessions are peppered throughout the entire issue, so you might as well just get used to it. It's no secret that I'm not a fan of Tom King's work on this title, and, and rightfully so, but I'll give him credit for not shying away from the romantic relationship between Diana and Steve. There is a, how should we say this, a certain cultural segment of the population that believes that because Diana is an Amazon, she should never engage in any kind of romantic relationships with anyone other than another woman. That's just not her history, and I'm glad to see at least Tom King embracing that. After the trio stealthily winds their way over the prison's roof, they decide to crash through a skylight into the security control center down below. After a brief fight to subdue the guards, Damien concocts a plan to free all the prisoners. Steve will activate alarms to draw attention. Damien will unlock the prison cells while everyone is distracted, and the prison cells are set up that they have to be unlocked manually one at a time. And then Diana will hold the line against the onrush of armed guards. The plan works. The prisoners are freed, and Damien activates a magical portal into the dark roads for everyone to escape. That's the part where Superman number 18 comes in. And that's pretty much it, right? I mean, do you see what I mean? There's not much to this issue other than the prisoners have escaped Gamora Island prison. That's the big idea or the big development that happens in this issue. The rest is fluff and one bit of foolishness that's quintessential Tom King, which I'll talk about in a second. But overall, there's no real sense of tension Nobody really felt like they were in any kind of truly lethal, dangerous situation. Everything goes off according to plan. There's a complete and total lack of surprise in this issue. All right, well, so then let's switch over to the positives and the negatives. What's great about Wonder Woman number 13? Despite the oddly toned dialogue, Damien is the star of the show. He's witty, smart, and able to work out every plan to affect the escape. If there was any doubt Damien could take over for Batman as the backups and the Trinity stories suggest, this issue helps put those doubts to rest. Okay, so what about the negatives? What's not great about Wonder Woman number 13? The issue stumbles in actually several areas. First, the impromptu makeout sessions, while sweet, undercut the urgency and seriousness of the situation. A military man and an Amazonian warrior are the last people on Earth to not have their priorities straight in a dangerous situation. Second, Damien steals the show in this issue, which is great, but his dialogue is oddly formal in several spots. King just doesn't have Damien's voice dialed in, and it shows, and it just feels clunky, stiff, and weird. Third, Gamora Island must be one of the worst-run prisons on the planet if three unarmed civilians can hold off a small army of stormtroopers and free every prisoner by opening one cell at a time manually. How could Amanda Waller affect a planetary takeover and have such a poorly secured prison? That's just lazy writing. Last but not least, Tom King engages in the worst example of making something happen because the script says so. A group of stormtroopers opens fire on Diana, who blocks every single bullet with her bracer. Mind you, Diana has been robbed of all her powers, so she has neither the strength nor the speed of Wonder Woman. 
Somehow, she is strong enough to stop multiple bullets with her bracer and still remain on her feet. The stormtroopers become flummoxed and can't seem to figure out that they should shoot another part of her body. Again, we have here another example of Tom King poorly elevating a character by making everyone around that character look like incompetent buffoons. Let's switch gears for a second and talk about the art. How is it? Uh, the art is fine to great. Just on the average, it's pretty good. Tony S. Daniel brings the script to life with solid character designs, excellent facial acting, good use of perspective and silhouettes, especially because a lot of this sneaking around and stealth that's happening at nighttime, and an all-around dramatic aesthetic. The comic looks pretty good. There is a backup story, presumably to justify the elevated cover price, although in my opinion it probably doesn't warrant the value, but we'll talk about it anyway. For reasons that remain a mystery, Damien Wayne recounts the events of the last two issues to Trinity with a decidedly biased view of, of his importance in those issues. This isn't the secret origin of Trinity as the title suggests, but you know, it's a Tom King comic, so false advertising is to be expected. Final thoughts, what do we think about Wonder Woman number 13 from DC Comics? You pair Steve Trevor with Diana and Damian Wayne on a reckless mission to break all the heroes out of Gomorrah Island prison with very predictable results. Tom King gets the job done, even if Damian's voice is off and Wonder Woman's contribution ranges from marginal to ridiculous. Get this issue if you really want to know how the prisoners escaped, but skip it for everything else. This issue is for absolute power completists only, so you really don't need it. Therefore, Wonder Woman number 13 earns a 5 out of 10. This is a typical Wonder Woman comic from Tom King with impactful moments lost in poor creative choices and terrible character voices. But what do you think? How would you stack up Wonder Woman's contribution to absolute power compared to, say, Green Lantern? Or maybe Superman? Or even Batman? Leave a thumbs up if you've been staying up to date on absolute power and drop a comment below with your opinions of the absolute initiative that's getting ready to launch as an outcome of absolute power. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one. <laughs>